Welcome to the first. You have a story. If you look back on your life, you've done things for the first time that no one in your family, in your town, in the country has done. This is Dr. Sandy. You have unknowingly paved the way for others without knowing it or even acknowledging it. This is where you tell your story so that those who come after you can walk in your footsteps to build their own firsts. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Sandy from The First Podcast. Today we are going to be speaking to Liz Castelli. Liz is the co-founder and COO of Tinsel Designs. Tinsel Designs is an amazing event planning company that does a lot of events for the stars. You should take a look at her website. Liz is the first entrepreneur in her family. She started, ran, and successfully maintained a profitable business. And then she was the first to also attend an Ivy League school, which was Columbia University. Liz didn't stop there. She had the nerve to be the first to move out of New York tri-state area and move to Utah, which is a big deal. You know that if you're from a big family. So today, let's welcome Liz Castelli and hear what she has to say about her first. Today, I'm speaking to the amazing Liz Castelli. Liz and I knew each other from a woman's group that we belong to. Hi, so Sandy. It's so bit. nice to chat with you. <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about Tinsel Design, first of all, and some of the stuff that you do. Well, hello, Sandy, and thank you so much for uh invited me to speak. I admire all that you do. And I was honored when you wanted to chat a little bit further. Um, so my company, Tinsel Experiential Design, I own it with um, actually two of my friends from college. Uh, we all knew each other. We were in an acapella group together. Um, and when our separate no, I'm going to make you sing, right? Now you're going to have to sing. <laughs> oh, God. I can't anymore. <laughs> Um, they both went into advertising, uh, one on the creative side, one on the marketing side. And I went into science and science education in New York city. Um, and eventually sort of a few years later, we kind of all found each other again, um, and thought it would be super fun to start a business so easy. Uh, and essentially over the last 10 years, it's, um, changed and grown into this, uh, marketing agency where we do experiential marketing, um, for big brands uh, from Nike to, you know, um, oh gosh, uh, Twitch across, you know, different types of platforms. We've done galas for, you know, the Whitney and Guggenheim. And I've um, seen some on your website. They're amazing. Yeah, we've really, and we've gone from, you know, it just events as experiences to complete sort of 360 program activations and working with, you know, digital marketing departments and, and really sort of integrating it into the larger uh, goals of whatever company or, you know, brand we're working with. Um, yes. And we've still stayed true to our roots, which, you know, we have a lot of really fun social projects. Um, you know, we came up in the industry and started in uh, weddings and, and essentially have morphed into something much bigger. And so- How long have you had this business? This is the, we're going into the 11th year now, believe it or oh, not. And of course, oh you know, the God. first, first couple were all, we were all had full-time jobs and, you know, did this on the Listen, side. God bless you. You <laughs> know, it's hard just to get to one year as a woman yeah. business owner. So 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. That we've had, awesome. we've had a lot of, thank you. Thank you. And we, you know, we started small with. Um, we, we, I think our first major milestone besides obviously registering the company was we, uh, entered a competition at the Brooklyn library called the Brooklyn power up. Uh, yeah. and we came in second place and we thought just, you know, we had arrived and it was such <laughs> a fantastic, like just jumping off point to be like, I think we're doing this right. You know, and we were so small then, but it just, it really propelled us to keep going. Nice. I do remember that power up. Yeah. <laughs> I had a program. I've spoken there a couple of times mm -hmm. and I used to do a lot of, that wasn't called podcasting then, but we used to interview people at that library. And so mm -hmm. we were part of the power up thing. So 
Yeah, we probably could have met each other in another life. <laughs> yeah, there were some there were some awesome people that came through that, you know, would give seminars or, you know, yes. show you about this part of your business plan or how to do that. And so it right. was just, you know, you really get to see how it really happens and gets done. And it, it really motivated us. So it was so a great that, program. I love that you were part of it. <laughs> that's interesting in itself because you said you're the first person in your family, your first first to be an entrepreneur and you actually did a business <laughs> plan and the whole thing. So tell me about that first. Yeah, I come from a long line of, you know, teachers and mechanics and, uh, you know, engineers and sort of uh, folks who have always worked for companies or for, you know, the government and education. And so um it, it has been to a learning experience is like the understatement of my life. Um, <laughs> sort of like learning uh, a, a whole new industry. You know, my side, my background is in science. I majored in biology and geology. And then I realized I wanted to be an educator. And so I went to graduate school um, for education um, and spent um, uh, seven, seven and a half years in New York City teaching. And it was oh, an amazing wow. experience. And I loved teaching. I absolutely loved teaching. I taught middle school in East Harlem and in the Bronx. And it was, oh, really? uh, excuse me, and in um, East Harlem and, and, uh, and um, Washington Heights. And so, like, you know, you, you just, it, it, was, it was, it's a different world. And so. It is. Um, starting a business while doing all of that, you know, and learning sort of, you know, I think education is very different in that your job as an educator is to move everybody forward. That's the whole point of it. You know, right. it is, it is growth. It is growth for everyone, every yes. student. And that is your measure of success. And I think that growth in business is a, is a different ball game. And I think that, you know, but isn't it the a big same piece thing of, my... of moving everyone forward though? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. But I think that, you know, my sort of like starry eyed educator, like, you know, uh, rose colored glasses of, of what it means to move people forward in business was a, you, there's a different, there's a different sense, I think, um, in learning how to deal with clients in learning how to, you know, function. I think, you know, just learning the different some rules of them and are physics like, of business. Some of the clients are like kids though. It's so true. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's so true, Sandy. Um, but it has opened my eyes to, I think, just so many other possibilities and honestly, a different way to think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's risk, it's um, uncertainty. And yes. I think, you know, um, granted, showing up every day in the classroom is mentally, physically, emotionally, you have to give it everything, um, but there's no risk, you know, you do yes. your best and everyone is, everyone is there together. And I think, I've really become accustomed and excited to exploring the unknown, you know, and, and taking on risk. Um, and it's exciting. It's made me into a different person, I think. Were you supported in this by your family, this new venture? They, I think at first were like, oh, this will be a cute little side project. She's so talented. It'll be great, you know? <laughs> um, and a lot of my teacher friends were like, cool, but like, why do you want to work more? Don't you just want to like, you know, teach and do your job well and call it, right. you know, and I think um, up until three years ago, everyone was like, oh, how's the wedding planning going? Sorry. You know, I don't do that. That is not what I do for a living. <laughs> um, so I, I think the biggest, it's not that they didn't support me. I think everyone's always supported me. I'm very lucky to have a supportive family. I think it's just nobody knew the framework, you know, nobody understood sort of what I was getting into and what I was doing. And so but you were know, they that. aware that you were the first one in the family that that was stepping outside of that science education mold? And did they celebrate yeah. that with you? Yeah, I think, I mean, my family is always super supportive. We're, we're, they're very like, okay, but this will be great. Let's, you know, let's keep the teaching thing going though. I think they've learned that, you know, I'm a pretty... Um, I sort of take all of the, you know, data points and then I make decisions. So I know that my family feels that whatever decisions I am making are the, are ones I've thought about, you know, a lot. Mm -hmm. 
And so there's a lot of support there. I, I'm very lucky. And I think, you know, every time we touch base, they're like, I can't believe what you're doing. This is, <laughs> that's crazy. You Do know? you invite them to your events? Have they been so to actually, events? yes, we, we host, my company hosts, uh, and it's gotten bigger every year. We started at this little, we, we rented like an Airbnb in the middle of Tribeca, you know, one room and, and we, we, throw a party, essentially thanking everyone that's worked with us over oh, the last nice. year, clients. Yeah. And, and they're usually weird and very us and, you know, everybody gets their tarot cards read and, you know, we've had tattoo artists come like, it's just nuts. And they're just so much fun, you know, and, and the last year it was actually at the New York public library. And so, um, to see sort of the growth of our company and then to be able to invite my friends and family that have, not really been on the journey, but to see where we are now and that, you know, we were able to take over the New York public library and and have our logo splashed across the front of it. You know, I think it was this moment my parents were there. They were like, wow. Wow. You've You've arrived. Exactly. Yeah. It was very exciting. (laughs) So what are the, you just talked about that's nice to do. What are some of the other joys you think uh, of being the first in, in any area of your life? I think it just opens you up to a new way of thinking it does. of the possibilities, you know, um, when I first went to school, it was like, all right, well, I could be a teacher. I could be an engineer. I could be, a, you know, you, a doctor, you know, there are these sort of paths, but I think as an entrepreneur, you're always looking at things through that lens, yes. you know, yes. even to like, we bought our first house. We were like, okay, so what if we need to move? Well, we could rent it out, you know, and and, and it seems obvious, but like, you're just, your whole mind frame switches to thinking entrepreneurially. Yes. And I, and I, it's such a gift and it's exciting. (laughs) I I think when you're an entrepreneur and you're willing to take that step Mm -hmm. into the unknown, because you're literally stepping off a cliff. Oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> into the unknown, right? Once you do that, I think it gives you the impetus to do a lot of other things. Yeah, yes. Have I you been doing more. a lot of things that are first for you just because now you yeah. know, you kind of know how to do it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my husband's always been very physically active, but since then, you know, I've had sort of no problem. I've never been a sporty kid. I was always the one who was like in musical theater, and, you know, and so now I just, yeah, like I, you know, we're like, let's try surfing, let's try snowboarding. And it doesn't seem like such a scary thing to be bad at something for a while. You know, I think the other thing that being an entrepreneur like gets you used to is like, you don't win at all. In fact, you know, you don't usually win, Yes, but you know, you, you, you develop a resilience. I I can't tell you how much more like when we would not land clients in the beginning. I mean, I would cry. I would be crushed, (laughs) you know, and now I'm like, it's okay. I think that's common. The next. That's common. We, that very first client, we hold on to it. Like mm -hmm. nobody wants me and God forbid you go to a second client and you also get rejected. It's like, nobody wants me. And it's like, people out of the whole world, but yeah. it's your world and it yeah. means so much. I found when when I was in corporate, if I got rejected, it wasn't the same feel. Interesting. Because it's not what you have actually like, yeah. you know, it's, it's not like your me. baby. Or- <laughs> this, is, this is a rejection of me, right? Yeah. When you lose that, that first client. But you learn. You yeah. learn that no, and sometimes that client comes back. Yeah. That first yes. one. So it's never really a no. My thing is no is never really no. It's just a not right now. And that I helps that. me. <laughs> that I helps love me that. get through, through a lot of those no's. I'm going to like just write that down. It's no, it's not okay. just not right now. Yes, no is <laughs> never, never a no. We made that a mantra in, in our mm-hmm. company because we would go after a client, after a client all the time. Yeah, yeah. And it's I remember it took us like 10 years to land this client. We never stopped. Wow. But it was worth it. It was like a couple million dollars. Wow. You know, and when we got it, it's still a client today. Wow. So it was well worth it. And we put work into it. Every year we said we'll go out once or twice. Mm-hmm. And we'd hit the client, kept in, staying in front of them. So it worked out. So it can work out. 
Yeah. I think another big first in, in landing those big clients is like, you learn that like you, you land them and then, and then your first is like figuring out how to do it sometimes. Yes. I have to yes. say, there's just this embracing of the unknown. And that's, that's a huge first for me. Usually it's like, well, let me determine all of the factors and then I make a decision. Whereas here you're like, all right, let's say yes. And we're figuring it out as we go. You know, what did you do for your first client? What was the kind of, oh my gosh. Well, okay. So there's like the first client in our, like, you know, we are three friends who are just like starting a business and we didn't know what that meant. And then there's like, you know, our first corporate real, you know, uh, sort of milestones. But the first one we did was a uh, baby shower for a friend in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, and I think it, it was 600 US dollars. And we were like, we've made it. <laughs> and then you got $600,000. Yeah. And now I, we sort of have like two or we, I would say one of our first leveling up clients, our first corporate was um, through the brand origins. And, and it was for a PR and, you know, PR is, is pretty special because they have to be super flexible and budget conscious. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of PR that happens. And so we were able to kind of break into this market that was very adjacent to what we were already doing, but it allowed us to start like harnessing the power of saying you've worked for a brand. Correct. And so, you know, we didn't treat it as different because it still felt like the same thing, but then we've learned, you know, what those types of clients are, are expecting and what they need. And it's not more or less, but it's different, you know? Correct. And so um, working for Origins was a big, a big first step for us. And then- that, that sounds tough to me because each one of your clients want a personalized thing. They yeah. want something different from the first. When in business, you're used to giving a lot of the same, and being mm -hmm. consistent and doing a lot of the same thing. If you delivered it this way, you're going to deliver it this way for another client. But you cannot do that. No, that's the opposite of our, I think it makes our industry particularly difficult, but also very exciting. Um, you know, when we land clients, it's not an agency model of agency of record retention. We land big projects. And so mm -hmm. the sales machine of our company is huge. And, and we all learned what it meant to build that because we were never uh, able to access capital to just hire experts. And so we've had amazing coaches along the way. And we basically had to have a whole slew of firsts, you know, for me, how do, how do we make this process of creative being a service company that our offering is creative design and production of those things and the concepts and the programming. Mm -hmm. How do we make that something that is repeatable? And so we were able to make processes out of everything. And so now what we're doing I love is processes. the same experience. And I know when, when you first met and you were like, I, I want to see where you go. Your story <laughs> sort of sounds like, I was like, oh my gosh, Sandy. <laughs> Sandy sees me, you know, it was this yeah. moment of like, and, and I think that was a first for me too, to have somebody who's in operations and has built a company recognize that I, albeit on a smaller scale when we first met, uh, it was a first for me. You recognizing me with all of the, you know, sort of like laundry list of accomplishments mm -hmm. and degrees was a huge first for me as a, as a person the, in business. The fact that you have a business for that long <laughs> and that you've excelled at your business and that you can say you broke the million dollar mark in your business. All of those firsts are huge for women. Yeah. Yeah. And we We're don't like play it a less lot. Less than 3% mark yes, of everyone. We yeah. don't play it a lot. And we yeah. really shouldn't. And so when I see another woman who made that, I celebrate them. I'm it's so, so happy. Amazing. I mean, that's this podcast. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. And it's there to show people that we can do it. And, and we don't recognize the little things we do. We think it's little, but it's really mm -hmm. a big thing. And we mm -hmm, should take mm -hmm. time to stop and celebrate that we've done these things. Because mm -hmm. pass you on the street and you're just like Liz on the street. And but beneath that <laughs> on the street, <laughs> there's an awesome, awesome person doing things that's impacting employees and your community mm -hmm. and you're giving back all these things. And that's what I want to 
portray and understand on, on this. And then you did all that and moved to Utah. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of first, my husband. Uh, Utah, I've never been. I know. It's lovely. I, I'm a new, I mean, I'm born and bred New Yorker. I went to college in DC for four years and was like, nope, can't wait to go back, you know? Um, but my husband got a first for him. He was able to, uh, he got a job teaching a lecture, a math lecture at a university out here. And we were like, this is the first that we can't ignore. So nice. Um, and my business, you know, for sort of what happened during the pandemic and what is still happening, we became completely remote. We went to a more asset light model. We've leveraged some of the huge talent that now is uh, out there and available. Oh, wow. And we've Definitely. we've made a stronger business model, which has given me the flexibility to support my husband in his sort of journey of first, right. you know, which right. is exciting. And to go to a new place. I mean, you yeah. probably wouldn't have done that if it wasn't a pandemic. You're like, how can I pick up and move? My it was so thing. scary. But ultimately, I think it, it it's that thing that you just, it shoved you off the cliff. You know, yes. it shoved our business off the cliff into um, actually becoming more profitable than we ever have. We've landed our biggest clients this year. You know, wow. like it, it's sort of this crazy thing that I think showed me that we, have a hell of a lot of grit to be able but to you, take you've that. taken lemons and made lemonade. Yeah. Which is yes. what business owners have to do. They have to turn it around. <laughs> when there's like no daily, other choice. <laughs> daily. Oh my God, I know. You know, what what will we do to get out of this situation? My mm -hmm. my business C to G, we always grew whenever there was a downturn in the economy or whenever, wow. you know, there was pitfalls. Because that's the time we actually sat and said, what should we do with this business? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you might try something that you wanted to try and thought it was too risky before, or you, you'll start a new service like mm -hmm. we did or a new line of business. And you have time to kind of nurture it. You know, mm -hmm. you're pushed into doing it. But once you're pushed and said, let me try this, everything is now a try, right? Yeah. So if it fails, there's not this big doom gloom thing hanging over you because we're trying it and see if it works. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to take that. We've, we've grown in every downturn and, and that's my goal. <laughs> because wow, downturns help you be more creative about yeah. your business. It's sink yeah. or swim. And it's also sort of this weird cleansing of your market, you know? It, I think that we've learned that, you know, only the strong survive sort of in that this. Is true. And so we've been able to give, you know, jobs and again, hire more people who ha are talented and, you know, it's made us stronger in a lot of different ways, to be honest. So now, are you back doing in-person events? We are. And actually we did during the pandemic, um, a safe at home campaign for Twitch. Uh, and so we were, I mean, we were in market in November. Um, we, we did, um, a huge, um, push for the election cycle. So we worked with, and we were the, um, the agency around the pizza to the polls trucks that went out nationally to all of the voters, um, across the country. And so we were able to develop that program and then, you know, we did it, we redid it for the Georgia election cycle right. and now there's laws in place. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Isn't it nice to see that something you worked on and, and the fruits of your labor? Oh my God. It was, again, like one of those reasons where you're like, this is why I'm in business. Like we literally yes. flipped the freaking Senate. <laughs> I just was like, nothing else matters. <laughs> That's what I mean about impacting people outside of yourself. Yeah. Because unless you said that, how would I know? that you were behind all of that like yeah. you see these things happening and you don't really think about the people behind it that's really making it happen mm -hmm, right because mm -hmm. that's that's a huge deal i mean that changed <laughs> no, it yeah, is we it changed the country we were so lucky to work with an amazing um organization called impactual that sort of you know they're the conduit for change and so they put you know things behind these initiatives and then they hired us to make right. it happen, um, which was really, really phenomenal. You know, they were like, great, we have the dollars, you're making it happen. We were like, sounds great. Can't wait. You know, here's how we're going to do it. <laughs> so what's next? What's your next? 
Well, um, I've actually been having a lot of fun chatting with a couple of my friends who've started to dip their toes into business ownership. Um, I have a friend who recently started a Montessori school uh, in sort of a, she's in the Outer Banks in um, North Carolina, in North Carolina, in, uh, yeah, in the Carolinas. And um, it's been really exciting to just have these sort of like big picture conversations around business and strategy and how to set it up right the first time yes. with someone who's starting a small business and ultimately is creating their, you know, she was a waitress before and, you know, she would work different jobs and she is, she tutored me in physics in college. Like she is one of the smartest humans I know um, apart from my husband, but it's been able, it's been awesome. Like sort of just been able to be like, don't do this, do this because X, Y, Z happened to me in my company, you know, or right. this is a right. great idea, you know, and I, and, and she's gotten the bug. She is so excited. She's grown her school like five times in enrollment in the last year. Um, nice. And has really like found this amazing community of people who support what she is trying to do out there. And I think it's on, I mean, it's made education, more options for parents for education out there, yes. you know, like there's just really exciting things happening. And so it's that piece. And then as far as our company is going, we've got a couple of, you know, we're back in sales mode. Um, things are starting to come alive again that aren't even, you know, sort of pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, era campaigns. Um, and so we are currently pitching for a ton of, uh, a ton of work, which, you know, a, a lot of our energy and time is going into that and planning for the next phase of our company, you know, whether it's seeking investment or we're just trying to get bigger and, and get to the next step, which is really exciting. So I, I was going to ask you how you're sharing the knowledge, but you just absolutely blew that away because you're sharing, <laughs> no, you're sharing with a lot of business owners what to do and that's the best way i can see that you can give back mm -hmm. so did anyone inspire you to be the first like who was you know who are the people that you looked at and say hey i could i can do that too or if that person's doing it i'd really love to do it like who are I, those I, you know it's funny i had my head down for so many years in the for in the beginning it was just about doing the work uh -huh. You know, that I didn't, the first time I really kind of stood up and looked around was, I would say, in the WPO group, you know, in this program with you. And I, and I think just seeing all of the powerful, accomplished women, but that they shared similar struggles to me. Yes. Um, made me feel like, oh, my gosh, you don't have to have all the answers. And the whole point is to just, you're always solving problems. And I think that sort of the inspiration I've taken from this strong group of resilient women who also have, you know, it's just as scary for them as it is for me. And the roller coaster is real, yes. you know, like um, has just been inspiring. And you yourself, I mean, honestly, like, I'm like, I want to be like Sandy, like even <laughs> to the point where I'm like, all right, I'm, I've started studying for my entrance exams for a master's and uh, an executive oh, MBA. So I just think you're, um, it, it, you scared me. And there are a couple other women that scare me in our WPO group, but those are the people that I want to be the most like. Um, I'm sorry. Great. I don't, I, I don't think <laughs> myself scary, but I, oh, I, love I it. do consider myself. I like to be proactive. I like mm -hmm. to try new things and that scares people sometimes. And, and you're I, willing I, to put I, it I, out there. I'm you sorry. Know, you asked, you're willing to put it out there. I remember yes. like questions that like you and Marissa Manley would ask me. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, like don't pick on me, you know? <laughs> but you just get used to like being able to have those conversations, you know? And you have to, you can't be afraid. I, mm. I think asking for help is the biggest thing any business owner could do. And a lot mm -hmm. of times we don't. Because mm -hmm. we don't want to air our dirty laundry. We want everyone to think we're making, you know, $10 million exactly. and keeping $9 million of it instead yeah, of yeah, zero. Right. It's, <laughs> you, well, you it's have, inspired it, us. Oh, go ahead. No, I just want to say we want to be seen as bigger than big. And yeah. we're really not. We're just a, people in our own little world that needs help. Yeah. And we've actually found um, our first set of business consultants that really launched us into, you know, um, 
tracking in a way for growth and, and honing in on the specific pieces that needed to change. Um, mm-hmm. We found an amazing consulting group, um, two women that we worked again, you know, we've had a lot of luck working with women um, and they put us through boot camp. I mean, to the point where, you know, it was like wrong, you know, and this, you, I swear, it's like seared in my brain. You can do business in the fairy land that you've made up, or you can do business in the real world, you know? And I'm like, okay, got it. Um, so that was amazing. And, and now we're working with another group of amazing women um, who are supported by some excellent gentlemen um, in this next phase of what we're trying to build and do. And so we've, we've made those connections through the WPO group. I think a first for me is, you know, I don't, I don't, um, none of my family is good at networking or making connections or, you know, it's like you have your friends and then you go to work. And I feel like for the first time, I'm able to say that I have sort of these um, real and meaningful relationships with people in my industry that I'm excited to nurture. You know, that's something that was a huge, you know, I'm fine. Sit me down in front of a computer. I'll do the work all day. But like doing this is very much a first for me, you know, like it's not something I do usually a podcast? think about. Yeah. Well, I've never done a podcast before. So <laughs> thanks. But also just to have these types of relationships where it's about, you know, nurturing and seeing what's out there and what's next. So that's a huge first for me. I still struggle with that. Well, maybe you too will have a podcast. I mean, let's not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> it's not far fetched. It's really just talking to people while you're being <laughs> Yeah, that's like I'm sweating <laughs> thinking about it. It's, just, it's out of my comfort zone. <laughs> no. Do you do a blog even? Do you have you- no. I've never never okay. done any of Maybe that. we'll get you to hide behind the blog first. Yeah, sounds good. I like to hide behind curtains. <laughs> Well, no, thank you. Is there anything else you want to share about, you know, oh, just gosh. impact on the world? What do you hope for in the next 10 years, five to 10 years, Liz? I um, I hope for growth. I, you know, I cannot believe how much I've grown specifically in the last like two to three years. I think the hardest times in our lives are when we grow the most. I think, you know, in transforming our business into a, a real machine that is successful and profitable on a, on a scale that's not normal in, you know, specifically events. And um, just seeing all the things I'm capable of, I, I just want, I'm excited for growth in whatever that means. I want to just keep going and going and going and having, you know, being able to do more and and learn more and and meet more people and so I'm excited for growth. I'm excited just listening to you. Yeah, I know. I I'm can't get wait tingly. to see. Yes, I can't wait to see what's coming up. What's going to be in your future? Yeah, thank you so much. This is so. It's always lovely, whether we're on podcast or not, just to get to hear you and chat with you. And so, thank you. And thank you for sharing. I truly appreciate all the sharing. It's. When we share, we teach other people. So you're still teaching in that sense. (laughs) It's been amazing, yeah. This is Dr. Sandy. Thank you so much for sharing your journey on the first, where no two stories are alike, even if the circumstances are similar. Let this discussion serve as inspiration for others to show what's possible, and more importantly, to produce seconds and thirds.